Howdy and welcome to Scorpius, a bright summer constellation. This video will show you how to recognize this constellation, where and when to look for it, and some interesting objects within it. Before we get going, here's a crazy idea for you. Our galaxy is like a large, flat, circular city, a metropolis of stars. We live out in its suburbs, and the view towards Scorpius looks towards downtown, where the action is, at the city's center. This is Touring the Night Sky with Zachary Singer. If we're heading downtown, we're going to want to recognize some landmarks so we head in the right direction and don't get lost. Learning to recognize Scorpius, then, is a tool for our travels across the sky. Let's get going. One great thing about Scorpius, the scorpion, is that it looks like what it's named after. Here's the scorpion's body. Here's its tail. And here is the stinger. On the front side, here are stars marking its claws. The scorpion's shape really stands out in a dark country sky, partly because of its beautiful curves and partly because so many of the stars in its outline are bright. Unlike Virgo, which we toured for May, most of the stars in Scorpius are luminous enough to remain visible even under moderate light pollution. That's especially true for the bright orange star Antares, accompanied by two blue stars on either side. They form a conspicuous flat triangle that will become increasingly obvious to you after you've seen Scorpius a few times. Once you know the scorpion's shape, it will be simple to locate. In July, go out around 10.30 p.m. and look for it low above the southern horizon. As seen from 40 degrees north, so Reno, Denver, Philadelphia, Antares will be about 20 degrees above the horizon at its highest. That is, the height of your fists held out at arm's length and held one above the other. The whole scorpion is about 30 degrees from head to tail, so about three fist widths across. Scorpius transits the southern sky, like other constellations, from east to west. The later in the month, or the evening, the further west you'll want to look. Our first stop is a globular cluster M4, which you'll find right next to Antares, down and to the right with binoculars, when the scorpion is high in the south. Globular clusters are giant and ancient groupings of perhaps 100,000 stars, tightly packed into a ball, or globe shape. That's where the name comes from. Globular, globular, tomato, tomato. Astronomers describe globular clusters as almost like a mini galaxy. They do resemble the core of a spiral galaxy like our own Milky Way, and the stars themselves are about as old as the Milky Way too, about 13 and a half billion years. M4 is one of the more easily viewed globulars. It shows up even in modest binoculars, and it's striking in a telescope. When we look at M4 in the constellation of Scorpius, we're looking from the Sun here, out this way. All the other markers you see plotted here represent globular clusters too. They're packed mainly near the galaxy's center, though they do spread out a bit. M4 and all the other globulars are orbiting the glowing center of the Milky Way. You know, where the tall buildings are in our make-believe city, just above the stinger in the tail of Scorpius. Those globulars are bound to this part of the sky by gravity, and so are we. That is, you and I are orbiting this part of the sky. That's certainly something to think about. M7, the Ptolemy Cluster, is a fine example of an open cluster, which I'll explain in just a moment. Under a dark country sky, M7 is bright enough to be seen easily with the naked eye. It looks great in binoculars and memorably luminous in a telescope. In a moderately large scope, light will seem to stream out of your eyepiece. Open clusters are the origin of the stars we see in the night sky, including our own sun, they form in huge clouds of gas and dust, like this one, Sharpless 29, in the constellation Sagittarius. The gravity of the cloud's material causes clumps where the gravity is even stronger, and as these clumps get increasingly smaller and denser, they get packed tightly enough to begin nuclear fusion, creating brand new stars, clustered where the nebula had been. Voila, an open cluster. 
The gas and dust hides the stars at first, but eventually the new star's radiation blows all that material away, leaving the stars themselves visible like they are at M7. Finding M7 is easy in a dark sky. Look for a large patchy glow just to the left or east of the Scorpion Stinger when Scorpius is high in the south. In more light polluted areas, you can guesstimate its location relative to the Stinger and aim your binoculars or finder scope there. Just remember how low this part of the sky will be and make sure your horizon isn't obstructed. So, all this brings us back to where we started, the Milky Way galaxy. As we saw, we live out in the suburbs of our galaxy. Here's how it looks from planet Earth. As you can see, our view is like a slice through the center of our galaxy, showing its cross section. Notice the thicker, brighter area? That's our downtown, our galaxy's center. By the way, this part of the Milky Way is 20,000 light years from us, so the light that we see now actually shows us how the galaxy looked 20,000 years ago. Here's where M7 is. It's right in the middle of downtown. Let's go see this up close. Here are the blue stars of M7 again. And now with all the city lights turned on. The area you're looking at covers perhaps a half degree of sky, about the same as a quarter would look if a friend held it out 10 feet from you. Now, let's look closer. This is what's really out there. There are far more stars in our Milky Way than you could count in your lifetime, even if you start as a baby, even if you never sleep or take time off, even if you live to be a hundred. While you won't see these dimmer stars without a large telescope sweeping the Milky Way with binoculars, or even your naked eyes when you're under a really dark sky, is quite an experience. I hope you have a chance to do so yourself sometime soon. When you do, remember, we're orbiting that bright downtown section. There's much more to see here, of course, but that will wait for our next video. Clear skies, my friends.